Hello children. So this is the last lecture in the chapter of organisms and population. So there are almost 90 to 20 lectures for this chapter. So we have detailedly discussed about organisms in detail and populations in detail. So we have seen what are the levels of organization and then we have discussed what do you mean by biome, what are the important biomes in India and then we have seen like what is a mean annual precipitation and what is a rainfall, what is the temperature that also we discussed and then we have seen listed out the major abiotic factors, what is their impact and what are the responses the organism shows towards this abiotic factor what are regulators, what are confirmers, what are migrators, what are suspenders, all that we discussed. Then we came to population, different types of population we have seen, population interactions is our last topic. In population interactions, interspecific interactions we are doing. There are six interactions, out of that we finished predation, parasitism, commensalism, competition, immensalism. We are left with the last interaction that we will do it in today's class that is mutualism. It is the sixth interaction. It is mutualism. It is also called, mutualism is also called symbiosis. Now, mutualistic association between both the species both the species will get benefited from each other so that is a mutualistic association sometimes it will be such an obligate association that in the absence of the other partner it cannot complete its life cycle also so means for mutualistic associations we have to give the symbols one species is benefited parallelly the other species is also getting benefited so we have to give plus symbols for both the species to understand the mutualistic associations in a better manner let us take some examples which will help us to clearly understand the concept like how to interaction is happening between two species and both the species are equally benefited one good example what we can cite here in mutualism is lichen associations about lichens in the 11th standard ncrt chapter 2 biological classification you will study so we will just take an example here the first example for mutualism i am taking lichens so what is lichen so lichens are associations they are associations between algae and fungi lichens are symbiotic associations between so i am telling algae and fungi the algal component of lichen is called phycobiont the fungal component of lichen is called mycobiont which classes of algae will make lichen associations so they are green algae either green algal members will make or blue green algal members will make symbiotic associations with fungi which classes of fungi will form lichen associations means either they can be ascomycetes members or they can be basidiomycetes members now what is the benefit algae is getting when it is associated with fungi and similarly vice versa what is the benefit the fungi is getting when it is associating with algae. So algae prepares food right it prepares food by photosynthesis since algae is preparing the food by mechanism photosynthesis algae will provide nourishment to fungi so children what benefit the fungi is getting from algal association it's getting food now what fungi will do now fungi provide shelter It provides shelter for the algae and it helps in reproduction of the lichens and helps in reproduction also. So, 
what benefit the fungi is doing for the algae it is helping the lichens to propagate by reproduction mechanism and it provides shelter for algae also and when we talk about plant succession there also we'll tell lichens are the pioneer species lichens are the first organisms to come and colonize on the bare rock they secrete acids on the rock and they help in the weathering and they help in pedogenesis making soil formation so we can also tell so lichens are helping in plant succession so we can tell lichens play <coughs> important role in zero serre zirac succession so in zirac succession what is this this is plant succession plant succession means plant development on a bare rock so what do the lichens do lichens they secrete acids on rocks and they help in weathering process and they help in weathering process so means they are helping in soil formation means we can tell that lichens are pioneers in which succession in zirac succession in zero serre so this is about our first association about mutualistic association or symbiotic association we took about lichens what are they they are symbiotic associations of algae and fungi what is the algal component called algal component is called phycobiont what is the fungal component called mycobiont what algae will do which classes of algae will make lichen associations either green algae or blue green algae which classes of fungi will make lichen associations either ascomycetes members or basidiomycetes members what benefit the algae will get from the fungi so the fungi provide shelter and fungi helps in reproduction what benefit fungi will get from the algae algae prepares food by photosynthesis and it gives that food to the fungi so the other ecological importance of lichens is it helps in plant succession with succession in water on land it's on dried land what is it called zero serre what it will do the lichen secretes acid they are the first organisms to go and colonize on the bare rock and they help in suction they help in starting the plant life if plant has to establish soil should be there it breaks the rocks with the acids and enzymes it makes the soil so then the plant life starts so that's why we are telling lichens are pioneers in zero serre so i think we understood about the first example let's move on to the second example of symbiosis another example of symbiosis or mutualistic association we can take mycorrhiza mycorrhiza is again an interesting example to understand second example is mycorrhiza so what are mycorrhiza mycorrhiza are the associations between fungi and the roots of the higher plants like pinus so mycorrhiza are symbiotic associations between fungi and the roots of higher plants the roots of higher plants like pinus the roots of higher plants like pinus if we have to list down the example for fungus which goes and associates with pinus is called rhizopogon what is the name of the fungi the name of the fungi which makes mycorrhizal association says rhizopogon p it is p o g o n is the name of the fungi which goes and associates with the roots of the higher plant now we told mutualistic association means both the species should get benefited what benefit the fungus will get from the plant plant provides shelter and plant gives carbohydrates food to the fungi what fungi will do study of fungi is called mycology My mycelium fungal network will be there those fungi mycelia will penetrate deep into the soil helps in absorption of more minerals and more water and it will give to the plant so if we have to see what the plant will do the plant provides shelter and new uh, carbohydrates also food also it provides carbohydrates to the fungi 
the plant is providing shelter and carbohydrates to fungi and what the fungi will do so we'll tell the fungal mycelial penetrates deep into the soil it penetrates deep into the soil and absorbs more water and more minerals and absorbs more water and minerals and it provides to the plant and provides to the plant so both are getting benefited so plant is giving food to the fungi fungi is giving water and minerals to the plant so this is second association and if we have to talk about one more example for mutualism it is a most spectacular evolutionary fascinating example is plant animal interaction so our third example let's go so the third example is it is most spectacular and evolutionary fascinating interaction we can tell it's evolutionary fascinating interaction between where do we find it we find it between plants and animals the interaction we find between plants and animals now what plant will get benefit from the animal and what animal will get benefit from the plant now plants depends for pollination on insects they also depend for seed dispersal now if the seeds they are not dispersed by the uh, organisms animals they'll establish at the same place then uh, they cannot establish themselves properly because they'll be overcrowded if the bird eats it, if it takes to a new place and it drops there, then in a new locality it can nicely grow and establish themselves. So plants depends on, they depend for pollination, they depend for seed dispersal, right? Now, what the plant will give to the animal in return? In return, plants offer, what do they offer to the animal so that the animal visits are continuously sustained so in return plants offer floral rewards like what it is giving to the animal nectar it will give nectar it will give edible pollens and it will give juicy and succulent fruits also for seed dispersal during seed dispersal, the animal eats the fruit which is juicy and succulent and then throws the seed for seed dispersal. So, plant needs in animals for pollination for seed dispersal. Now, what the plant is offering to the animal to sustain the animal visits is it is giving floral rewards in the form of nectar, in the form of edible pollen grains, in the form of juicy and succulent fruits. Now, what uh, animals do animals help in pollination so when the animal is coming to take the nectar and edible pollens the pollens will stick on its body and when it's taking when it's going to another flower to take the nectar these pollens will be dropped there so animal helps in pollination and seed dispersal so the animal is also getting benefited the plant is also getting benefited right so the animals and plants interactions evolve they involve co-evolution if the plant is changing so parallelly the animal also should evolve so we can tell plant and animal interactions involve co-evolution plant and animal interactions involve co-evolution if the plant is evolving then parallelly the animal also should evolve so so far we have seen three examples of mutualism the first and foremost example what we discussed is lichens which are symbiotic associations of algae with fungi the second example we discussed is mycorrhizal associations associations of fungi with the roots of higher plant like pinus 
third spectacular fascinating example what we discussed is plant and animal interaction now let's go to the fourth example it is the fig tree now fig has a special type of inflorescence which is called hypanthodium inflorescence i'll draw it and then we can understand it in a better manner the fourth example let's talk about fig and how is that fig inflorescence which is called hypanthodium is pollinated by wasp and you know they are obligate only one particular wasp can go and pollinate fig inflorescence what is its name we will see now so when we have to talk about the fourth example it is the fig tree fig tree has an inflorescence the inflorescence of the fig is called hypanthodium hypanthodium inflorescence is like this fleshy succulent thalamus it has a pore now inside that it has flowers unisexual flowers right so at the pore it has male flowers at the pore it has male unisexual flowers at the bottom it has female unisexual flowers this is a symbol for female at the bottom it has female unisexual flowers at the center it has sterile female flowers which are called gall flowers at the center it has gall flowers sterile flowers so what are these let us write down so these are so this is a hypanthodium inflorescence and this is unisexual female flower and which is at the bottom at the center it has sterile female flowers they are called gall flowers they are called neuter flowers at the starting it has unisexual male flowers now i told this is a inflorescence it's a swelled thalamus now only one insect can penetrate through this tiny hole what is the name of the insect i told it is a wasp the name of the wasp is blastophaga only one insect blastophaga which is a wasp can penetrate inside so it tries to penetrate inside so this is a insect this is the insect the insect tries to penetrate inside when it goes inside when it goes inside the male flowers will drop their pollen grains on its body when it goes inside the male flowers drop the pollen grains on its body and it goes to the female flowers and it drops the female flowers on that one or from another plant it is bringing the pollen grains so it is having pollen grains on its body so these are pollen grains it is having pollen grains from another plant and it enters and it drops the pollen here means it is helping in pollination so the blastophaga is helping in pollination who can dare enough to go inside and fertilize the female flowers means only the wasp blastophaga the means the fig is getting benefit the fig is getting benefit now why the insect dared and went inside to lay the eggs because uh, why, why the insect went inside means it want to lay the eggs means it goes to lay the eggs the insect will go and lay the eggs where on the gall flowers the insect goes inside and it lays the eggs inside the gall flowers so gall flowers are anyway sterile flowers they are not going to convert into fruit so no harm to the plant and when the young ones when the eggs hatch when the young larva comes they can nicely feed 
on the food here. So both are getting benefited. The wasp is getting benefited because the wasp is laying the eggs where in the gall flask, neutral flask. What benefit the plant is getting? The plant is getting pollinated. Only this wasp called blastophaga can go and pollinate. So this is our fourth example. Coming to similar type of example, if you go, it is yucca plant. So yucca plant is pollinated by a moth here. The name of the moth is pronuba. Yucca cella. The moth name is Pronuba Yucca cella. Same like this only. The moth only can go and lay the eggs inside the yucca plant, and the moth the moth will go and lay the eggs and it will pollinate the plant also. So this is one example. So we can also tell the Pronuba uh, moth another name is Tegicticula Yucca cella. What's the other name? Tegicticula. Yucca cella is an another name of the same moth. So why the moth is going to lay eggs? What the plant is getting benefited from the moth? Pollination. So this is also getting benefited. This is also getting benefited. So if both are getting benefited, it is mutualism. This is our fifth example. If we have to go to sixth example, beautiful example we can find with nitrogen fixation by leguminacy in, in leguminacy members. First example, we have seen lichens. Second example, we have seen mycorrhiza. Third example, plant animal pollination interactions you have seen. Fourth example, it's continuing specifically with fig plant which is having hypanthodium is pollinated by a wasp called blastophaga appeared in the neat examination. And fifth example, yucca plant being pollinated by a moth which is called pronuba yucca cell or tegeticula yucca cella. Now sixth example of symbiosis or mutualism if you have to discuss we can talk about nitrogen fixation. So nitrogen fixation is done by bacteria also is done by cyanobacteria also. So the fifth or fifth I am writing it as fifth example. The fifth example we can see it is symbiotic nitrogen fixation now if you see leguminacy plants if you unroot a leguminacy plant if you see the roots so what do we find so on the roots we find pink colored nodules so these nodules are the places where the bacteria is there so these they have a red colored pigment called leg hemoglobin so that is why they will be pink in color. Okay. So this is a leguminacy plant root having root nodules. Now inside the root nodules a bacteria called rhizobium will grow. So what is there inside the root nodules? Rhizobium bacteria will grow. So in leguminacy plants we find symbiotic associations with the bacteria. What is the name of the bacteria? It is rhizobium now what rhizobium will do for the plant it converts atmospheric nitrogen into ammonia nitrites and nitrates and it will help in nitrogen fixation so what rhizobium will do the rhizobium will synthesize an enzyme called nitrogenase the bacteria will synthesize an enzyme called nitrogenase which helps in conversion of nitrogen to ammonia. So the plant is getting ammonia nitrogen sources. Plant need nitrogen sources because soil is very much deficit of nitrogen. One, so rhizobium can fix nitrogen only in leguminacy members. So if you take non-leguminacy members. If you take non leguminacy members like Alnus, Casuarina, Myrica, all these are non leguminacy plants. These non leguminacy plants are having symbiotic associations with Francia, which is a cyanobacteria which will also synthesize nitrogenase enzyme and help in conversion of atmospheric nitrogen to ammonia fixes the nitrogen this 
came in the neat previous papers. In non leguminacy plants like Alnus, who will fix nitrogen, it is a cyanobacter member called Frankia. This is one more example. Other cyanobacteria also will do, for example, if you go with Anabina. Enabina will do nitrogen fixation in a plant called Azolla. And if you take one more cyanobacteria which is Nostoc. Nostoc helps in doing symbiotic nitrogen fixation with a Cycus plant, Cycus tree. So, leguminacy plants nitrogen fixation is done by bacteria Rhizobium. Non-leguminacy plants like Alnus, Cacherina, Myrica nitrogen fixation is done by a cyanobacter called Frankia. So, Anabina will do nitrogen fixation in a plant called Azolla. Nostoc will do nitrogen fixation in a plant called Cycus. So, this is our fifth mutualistic association, nitrogen fixation. Now, another example if we have to see, we can take ruminatums, ruminants and cellulose digestion as the sixth example. The sixth example for mutualism is ruminants and cellulose digestion ruminants and cellulose digestion now in ruminating animals in the elementary canal they will have an extra part near to the stomach extra chamber which is called rumen so cattle or we can tell grass grazing cattle grass grazing cattle have an additional chamber grass grazing cattle have an additional chamber what is that chamber called rumen near the stomach near the stomach now this rumen it hosts Symbiotic bacteria. In the rumen, symbiotic bacteria are there. Ruminococcus is an example. What is the example? Sorry. Ruminococcus is an example. Now, this symbiotic bacteria will synthesize cellulase enzyme. What they are eating is grass. Grass is made up of cellulose. Cellulose, if they have to digest, they need cellulose enzyme. But their elementary canal cannot synthesize cellulose enzyme. So, the symbiotic bacteria which are present in the rumen will synthesize cellulose enzyme. And the cellulose enzyme helps in cellulose digestion. Means it is helping in the food digestion. In turn, what the animal is doing for the bacteria? Animal is giving shelter for the bacteria, isn't it? So, this is one example. So, altogether six examples we have seen with mutualism. The last para, what they talk in NCRT is about uh, a orchard, a Mediterranean orchard, a Mediterranean orchard. What is its name? The Mediterranean orchard, its name is Ophirus. Now, the flower of this orchid plant has uncanny resemblance. The flower is having uncanny resemblance or one petal. One petal of the flower has uncanny resemblance with female insect. With the female insect. So, it resembles the female insect exactly in size, in color also, in markings on the body also. It resembles, exactly it resembles. Okay. Now, since the petal appears like a female insect, the male insect thinks it is a female insect and it comes for copulation. But then, after coming nearby, after landing on it, it will understand it is not an insect, it is not its partner, it is a flower. So, this mechanism, because copulation is not happening, it leads to pseudo copulation. It leads to pseudo copulation. But then, 
in this mechanism it is picking the pollen grains from the flower and again it will go and drop it on the other flower for pseudo copulation mechanism so this is a beautiful example of orchid it's a mediterranean orchid its name is ophirus the flower of the ophirus one petal of the flower of the ophirus has uncanny resemblance with the female insect the insect the male insect thinks it has a female insect and for copulation it comes when it comes and lands then it will come to know it is not a female insect but in that process it picks the pollen grains and drops the pollen grains on the other plant okay so all these are very good and interesting examples about the chapter this chapter has very much importance has very much weightage in the neat examination hope you understood this chapter so in the next session we'll start with a new chapter if you like the lectures like share and subscribe to my channel thank you